What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're going to be kicking off the Spring Boot for Beginners course. And I'm assuming that you know a little bit of Java. You don't need to know a ton because like I said, this is going to take you from the very beginning. I'm assuming that you know nothing and we will step-by-step -step, very slowly and methodically build out a real API. And the actual API that we're going to be building is a Pokemon review system. You can review your favorite Pokemon as well as be able to sign in and authenticate users. So you will be able to have actual users on your app as well too. So let's just talk about the big why. A lot of times people want to know why should I learn this framework? And like a lot of times that people learn frameworks and people learn languages is simply because of employment opportunities and Java Spring Boot is no different. There's a ton of jobs in Spring Boot. And if you don't believe me, I always tell people to go do your own due diligence. And oftentimes what you'll really realize is that Spring Boot and Java.net and a lot of these kind of other languages that a lot of people don't talk about, there's even more jobs in them compared to more popular languages like Node. So if you're just looking for employment opportunity, Spring Boot is going to be right up your alley. Number two is that it's opinionated. Now, opinionated kind of has negative connotations. You think opinionated is a, uh, a person is opinionated, but a lot of times in programming, opinionated is good because you don't have to worry about building your own stuff, so to speak. You can just quickly throw in an auth system. You can quickly throw in actuator if you need some type of complex logging and uh, Spring Boot makes it so that it's really plug and play and very versatile as well too and modular. So it's kind of like going to the store. You go to the store, you put things in your cart that you want and the things that you don't want, you don't put into the cart. And that's a huge reason why people still continue to use Spring Boot to this day. Speaking of the devil, it's established. Um, it's been around, uh, Java's been around a long time and when things have been around a long time, it builds a sense of trust within the community. People know that Spring Boot's not going anywhere. They don't have to worry that uh, it's going to be some type of fad. Spring Boot especially um, is here to stay. And uh, this is going to bring me into my next one. It's really easy to set up. Spring Boot makes it so that uh, it's, it's pretty much you just download it, you click it, and from the very get-go, there's a very small embedded server within Spring Boot that makes it so that you don't have to do any type of complicated setup like you had to do in Spring um, like five years ago. Five years ago, you used to have to uh, basically set up your own jars and stuff, but Spring Boot makes it so that you don't have to do any of that. And people love it as well as me. So quick deep dive into the actual framework itself. So one of the reasons it's so modular is because of dependency injection and inversion control, a very fancy word, but it makes it so that you can quickly bring in other parts of code into other parts of code and you can make your app very modular. We'll talk about that. It's like I said, kind of confusing word. We'll talk about that later. Um, and the whole entire idea of spring is this idea of beans and beans are kind of like it's a weird it's kind of a stupid word but it's just kind of like a word for an object and we can make it so that we can quickly just bring objects around in our app in a very methodical fashion a very modular fashion and that's one of the reasons that people prefer spring to build very large scale apps and this is actually from the spring boot website spring boot documentation Spring focuses on the plumbing of enterprise applications. So you focus on the logic. You focus on the code that you have to write. And Spring is going to make it so that you just have to focus on what you need to write instead of actually building out the real infrastructure and worry about unnecessary code. Okay, so I've gone to the actual Spring Initializer website. And what we are going to do now is we are going to go, I call it going to the store. You go to springinitializer.com so that you can pick out what packages and what stuff that you want. Because remember, Spring Boot is very modular and it allows us to be very opinionated, but it also allows us to be flexible. So what is Maven? What is Gravel? Gradle? 
Maven is going to be how you manage your dependencies in your project. Uh, there'll be what's called a pom.xml file. You'll see this later here in a second, but Maven is how you get uh, jar files into your actual local computer from a centralized uh, repository out in the cloud so you don't have to have all this stuff on your computer and just download all these annoying jar files like you used to have to. Okay, just choose 2.74. I would not use the snapshots. Uh, snapshots are kind of like the beta version or the version that is less tested, but just 2.74 is going to be the actual quote unquote stable version. So let's go down in here. We have a group dot, uh, com dot group and you may notice that this is backwards. Like why is this backwards? They do this because you're in theory, you're supposed to name this after the actual domain name, but they made it backwards so that it doesn't conflict with other files inside of your application. So we can call this uh, demo. And actually, I'm just going to call this review. And this will be review.pokemon.api. Actually, I'm going to go up here. I think this is a better review.api. This is a more realistic look to how a real domain would look in real life. And then we'll just go in here. Pokemon review API course 2022, almost about to be 2023. So next important is we're going to go into our dependencies over here and we're going to go just type in web, download spring web. And this will make it so that you can turn your spring boot app into an actual web application. And we can go back, we want Lombok as well too. You don't need to worry so much about if you don't get everything in one felt swoop because you can just go back and add it later. We also are going to need JPA. JPA is what's going to do all our database stuff. And I'm going to be using Postgres as well too. So we're going to be using the Postgres SQL driver. Okay, so this looks like everything that we need so far, and let's go ahead and generate this app. Okay, so take the actual zip file that you got from Spring Initializer, go ahead and unzip it, go into it, and then go into here and open folder as IntelliJ IDEA project. And what's going to happen is that it's going to go ahead, it's going to load everything, and the first thing that you want to do is you want to be able to run the actual application. And a lot of times you won't see the green arrow. So what you want to do is you want to go into the source file right here. You want to go to main, you want to go to Java, and then you want to go to the actual API application. And let's go ahead and click the green button. You're going to need to get these little green arrows right here in order for the actual app to run. So we're going to go here, we're going to go and click it. And this is what's actually going to boot up and run the application. You will get an error warning because we installed JPA with it and JPA is the database. So our database is not hooked up yet. It's not connected. Uh, we will do that here in a second, but we've got our application up and running. Let's go ahead and let's talk about the file structure. So internal external libraries this is where all your jar files are you're probably never going to use this right here you're probably never going to use scratches that much either so i would pretty much just disqualify these and just don't worry about them don't worry about idea don't worry about maven worry about source source is very important <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> source is very important because source is where your actual code is the code that you're going to work on 90% of the time is going to be in the main. And the main is where our uh, applicate, where we actually start the application. And this is where we will begin to actually build out our app. Resources is where you keep stuff like static. Uh, you also keep options and kind of like properties inside of application properties. This is very important as well too. Test is where you're going to store your unit test. Target is where the actual uh, code is going to be generated to. You will, it's important, but you will probably never go inside of it. 
get ignore is where you keep files that you want uh get to ignore help um just a quick help reference i've never really actually used this maven w so this is important uh maven is installed with uh spring boot normally when you had a old spring boot app you had to install maven but now maven comes pre-installed with spring boot and also it comes pre pre-installed with a little web server so you don't have to worry about setting up a web server you don't have to worry about setting up any of that uh you'll never use the m this thing right here so just don't worry about this um and the palm.xml file is where you go in case you didn't get the actual dependencies that you wanted um like in spring initializer so if you didn't add the exact thing that you wanted you can go into your palm file and you can add stuff later as well too and it's also very important because there's a lot of options and stuff that are involved with it too anyways that's going to be the first video i hope that you guys enjoyed this if you did make sure to hit that like button make sure to hit that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching